All right, it's 2 a.m. My script is broken. You see red everywhere. Stock overflow has betrayed me. Google is giving me an answer from 2011. Typical sysadmin life, right? But what if you had an AI that could just write the code for you? Ladies and gentlemen, meet ChatGPT Codex, or as I call it, the intern that never sleeps and doesn't complain about the free pizza. So, what's Codex? It's an AI model behind GitHub Copilot, basically Chad GPT's cousin who's obsessed with code. Codex takes normal English, like write me a PowerShell script that finds all inactive AD users and turns it in working code. It speaks Python, PowerShell, JavaScript, Go, you name it. For admins like us, this means less googling, obscure code errors, and more time yelling at VMware licensing. Let me show you how to start with Codex. Codex is a part of ChatGPT solution suite, uh, same as a Sora, GPTs, we have a Codex. Once you click on Codex, you will get this page open. Now, you can work straight away over here, or you can connect Codex to your GitHub repo. Now, this is useful because it can work directly with your repo. To do so, Codex needs your permissions. How to set it up? So let's say I have a new repo and I want to work with Codex on the new code. To start, I need to go to settings and build environment. As you can see, I already have one environment and it's called Hack Me Now. And this is the game I'm working on. I am learning Python and Codex helped me with some task which I would have spent hours to debug or search for the bugs, like obscure code errors, missing comma, indentation sometimes. And you know, like I'm new to Python and Codex helps me with finding errors and sometimes helping me understand the things and it can fix the error directly on, on, on my GitHub. So this is great, but I will show you how to set this up from scratch. By the way, if you want to see the game, head to play hack me now, one word, play hack me now, dot com and subscribe to waiting list thank you welcome to hack me now this is no ordinary game here you're dropped into a world of terminals commands and systems waiting to be cracked your mission is simple learn to think like a hacker act like an operator and defend like a sysadmin the first four levels are training grounds you will practice linux style commands explore fake file systems Already confident? Skip straight to level 5. But beware, from there, the gloves come off. Level 5 marks the start of true operations. Social engineering, remote access, privilege escalation, this is where it gets serious. Lost? Type help for command references. Use hint for nudges. And check objectives anytime to track your progress. But remember, every move is being watched. Defenders are scanning logs and hunting intruders. A wrong keystroke might expose you. Reroute quickly, erase your traces, or face being locked out. Play smart, and you'll break through. Access granted, secrets revealed, and flags captured. Hack Me Now is more than a game. It's your playground, your puzzle box, your proving ground. Welcome to the system. So, let's have a look. To create environment for Codex with GitHub, you click on the Create Environment. 
and then we see the list of repositories we gave codex access to and you can see it's just my hack me now so let's prepare new repository for the purpose of this demo in your github settings you need to add the repository you want to allow codex to work with and it doesn't need to be public it could be private repository and just click save all right so now go back to codex and let's refresh that page now we can see that this repository show up here but now we have to go back you can give a description you can change um, the addition settings here but then you click create environment the environment has been created with this repository so now we can go back to the main page now at main page let's just change to our codex demo and now we can write uh, the ta we can describe the task so we be write a python script dot place snake in the terminal so let's ask codex to code and we can see it's working on our task so if we click here we can see what's going on it's the brand new repo so it will take a bit more time because it will be setting up the environment and then create a script and we can see over here everything what is going on right now and there you are we have a file it's a new file so we can see that 213 lines were added and zero was deducted so now this is working on our repo directly so what we can do now as we can see we can review the code and we can create pr so let's do this and we can once it's ready we can view pr and we can decide if you want to merge or not it's a pull request yes pr pull request because it's brand new repo i don't have anything over there i can merge straight away i don't have any or i don't have any other code which there could be a conflict so config merge for me and it's there right If you go back to the main screen we can see that either we can try in our terminal which we will download the codex cli which is a powerful tool as well and this is instruction how to use it or like most of the developers we will go to ide and i am using vs code so let's have a look on that one here is our Visual Studio code and over here is our codex extension. So as you can see, we have our readme file and a snake, which was created by um, codex itself. So let's see if that runs. For many of you, this error is obvious. But if you're new to programming and you don't know what does it mean, this is the power of AI debugging. Let's copy that error and paste into the agent. There is an error. And see if Codex can fix it. As you can see, I am missing component from my Windows installation and it says installed 
uh, just uh, courses. Okay, so let's have a look if that will help our problem. Okay, and let's try to run the game again. And again, the error is kind of self-explanatory, but if you knew to coding or to any Linux output or PowerShell output, whatever, it can be scary. It just says terminal windows too small for snake, increase the size and try again. So we just need to like extend the terminal window. But if you don't know, let's copy and paste to our AI agent and see if it helps. We have approved the commands Codex wants to execute. We can have a look on it and we can approve once or we can approve for this session. So the next same request won't require your approval, which is great. The snake board is hard coded to 20 by 40 cells and the UI needs a couple extra row calls for border and score. So your terminal must must be at least about 24 line toss and 44 columns wide. Make your console window bigger. All right, so let's make it bigger. Let's play again. And there you are. And as you can see, it does work. Boom. So there you are. That's the codex. I had an error. I didn't know what to do. Codex find that for me. What next we can do? Instead, the game play in the can can it have its own UI. So let's have a look how this request will work. <laughs> and we can see there's a fourth task to complete. So review Snake PY to understand existing game logic and separate module for Courses UI, design approach for standalone window UI, and implement the new UI and advice on running the new UI. We have something to accept, so we can have a look what's going on and we can see this is the piece of code it will implement. And let's just blindly say, yes, approve it. This is just a game. We don't, we will not interact with any sensitive data or, or, or nothing. So I just blindly approved. Next command is okay. So it's like objects. Yep. Yeah, okay. So, but this is a, 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 this is something happening in the background and you don't have kind of, a, and you don't see what's going on. And that's why I prefer to work with a system which I can see the changes on the file. Um, anyway, let's have a look. So it says the game now opens in its own window instead of, uh, of using courses. Right. So let's have a look if there's a new file added on. No, there's no new files. Uh, but let's have a look what changed. And we can see that the new windows open looks a bit more like a old Nokia snake game and it does work. So there you are guys, uh, that's how the codex works. I like to work with it because again, it saves me ton of time on troubleshooting a special stupid issue as like you see the stupid mistake of missing some dependencies to install or to resize the, 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 the window. Now. 
So the first demo, which I asked Codex to write the script, was working with the remote branch. Now, this one is VS Code, which is my local repo. So those changes are only made locally. So if I need to save them to remote, you have to do the git app, git commit, git push. So let's talk about the good, bad, and the ugly. Pros. It saves hours on repetitive tasks. It's great if you learn new language, like myself, you see the stupid mistake, which probably you would code in the two seconds. Debugging feels like per programming with robot body because something wrong and you can spend, you can spend an hours, hours. Sometimes it's like this, if it's late, and even if you are a very good coder, you would have the situation that you're steering on the, on the error. You go into the bed and next day you say, oh my God, that was so easy to solve it. With help of AI, it solves in seconds or minutes instead of hours. Now, cons, very important. Sometimes AI is confidently wrong. It's like a junior who swears they code works, but hasn't tested. If you just run AI generate script blindly, congratulations, you've hacked yourself. And of course, Codex doesn't know your business logic. It's smart, but it's not you. So double check everything before you're running in production, unless you enjoy explaining your boss why whole database dropped or file system disappeared. Be smart. This is great tool to help you. This is not tool to replace you. So would you trust Codex with your scripts or would you double check everything it spills out? Drop a comment. I'd love to hear your war stories. And hey, if you want more angry admin experiments with AI, sys admin madness and probably me breaking things in production, hit this like button and hit notification bell. Catch you in the next one. Bye.